page 191, chapter 12. I am in this paragraph right here. It took me some time, of course, because I had dared not make any noise, so I did not hear the first of what they said. What did you hear? Please hurry. I heard Debu's voice first. He spoke very low, but it made a chill go up my spine. The way he spoke, he said, a curse on the festival. Fancy anyone cursing the High Nile Feast. Go on, Ranifer Beck. I am a curse on the festival, he said. The Nile can flood without us. Meet me at daybreak beside the broken tree. It is safe enough now. Everything in Ranifer seemed to stop. Heart, breath, thoughts. It was like the stone-cutting shop at midday when the clatter suddenly died to silence all at once. Hecate must have been satisfied with the effect he had created, for his eyes glistened. Then Wenemon said, It would be safer a year hence. And Gabu growled at him low, like a vicious dog. Or oh, never! I have waited long enough, he said. I made the plan. Now I want my reward, before I am too old to enjoy it. Do as I bid you. I must get hold of myself, Ranifer thought. I must think of something very fast that will make Hecate forget all this. But what? What? And then, he said, in as calm a tone as he could manage, then Wenemon said, and what of afterwards? At first I did not know what he meant, but soon I did, for Gebu smiled in a very unpleasant way and said, I have attended to that only an hour ago. Setma is not the only captain on the river, as I told him at the time. So Gebu had found a new smuggler, and the goblet would soon be gone, if it were not already. Go on, said Ranifer, swallowing. That is all. Gabu turned without another word and went off down the street, putting his feet down like chunks of stone. In a moment, Wenemon left too. Ranifer was silent, concentrating on keeping his expression casual while his mind spun furiously. Well, I could say, what do you think of it? I do not know what broken tree they mean, but if they are meeting tomorrow, should we not spy on them again and... And miss the feasting? We can feast later, when we have found out where they go. Surely you would not miss this chance. I do not think it is a chance, Renifer said. Suddenly, out of sheer necessity, inspiration came. Gebu is, is going to Abydos today. We cannot follow him there. Hecate's face fell ludicrous, ludicrously. To Abydos? Abydos? Aye. I heard him tell Pi so. Then why would he... Oh, I suppose the broken tree is there. No doubt Wenemon is going too. Aye, very likely. Ranifer nibbled on his cheese, attempting to seem thoughtful and even disappointed, looking anywhere but at Hecate. Hecate was silent for some minutes. It does seem strange, he said at last, in a puzzled voice, that they would make their plans here where they are known and might be overheard. Why not on the boat going down the river? Perhaps they are going on different boats. Where do I find these explanations so fast, Renifer thought, disgusted with himself. I am becoming as good a liar as that Babylonian. That is it, of course. Hecate sounded disgusted with himself, too, for not seeing something so apparent. Naturally, they would not travel together. It might seem suspicious. Doubtless they will pretend not to know each other at all when they get to Abydus or Abydus. Last, I wish we had a friend who sails a Nile boat. I would give my new shenty to see what they do tomorrow. There's no doubt some goldsmith will be the poorer for it. Aye, I'm afraid you are right. Ranifer gave a sigh that Hackett need not know was one of the relief, one of relief instead of disappointment. 
Hackett sighed too and got to his feet. It's clear we can do nothing about it this time. I am sorry it was such a good bit of spying. I will meet you tomorrow as we planned. At least we have the festival to console us. With a grin, he led the way out through the curtain of reeds, and Ranover followed. He had not tasted a bite of the good cheese he had eaten, and the festival had dwindled to nothing in his mind. He knew quite well that only one thing could lure Gebu from the prospect of free barley beer, the gold of the tomb. If he and that vulture who was his friend did not mean to join the merrymaking tomorrow, they were almost certainly going to the Valley of the Tombs of the Kings in broad daylight this time while all Thebes was occupied with feasting. Profoundly disturbed, Ranifer scarcely knew what he did all afternoon at the shop. When work ended for the day, he wandered through the scorching streets, blind and deaf to the spirit of holiday already sweeping the crowds around him. He had no desire to go home, but no reason for going anywhere else. He found himself at last pushing through the rustling, stiff reeds of the papyrus marsh, with the water lapping almost to his knees. The deep mud of the shallow was cool and soothing to his bare feet, but he could take no pleasures in it. Over and over in his mind appeared the image of the familiar mummy-shaped outline of the western hills and the sheer red cliffs that hid the valley of the tombs of the kings. How could he feast tomorrow, knowing with every bit of honey cake what was happening yonder? He would choke on the food. 